So let's look real quickly at a, at a standard gauge R&R uh, study and see what's really important. So then when we go to a destructive, we can see what's missing. So there's three things that I really look at when I see these statistics. And the first one is what's my total gauge R&R? Is it less than 9%? And in this case, it's 13.1. So I know it's close, it's close. So um, I'm gonna see what, what might be contributing to that being as high as it is. And so then right underneath that, it gives me repeatability and reproducibility, and these are additive. So if you remember the formula I gave you earlier, it's literally that plus that. And so I can see repeatability is twice as large as reproducibility, but I gotta look at one more thing, and that is the interaction. If the interaction is significant, it's just like design of experiments. I need to investigate the interaction first before I make conclusions about the main effects. So in this case, I need to investigate the interaction of the appraiser in part versus saying it's just mainly repeatability. All right, so I'm looking at those three things. So if I look at the graphs, and this, was, this is the example that's up in uh, engine room that Morstein has provided. I'll go down to that lower right-hand corner graph, and this is my interaction plot. And I have three operators, and what I'm drawn by is on seven of the 10 parts, they're really close. But on three parts, Fred appears to be different than Rick and Lucy. So your instant assessment is when you're looking at this, you go, oh my, it looks like Fred is a real problem. Well, it could be that Rick and Lucy are a problem and Fred understands how to do it. So we don't make conclusions of firing Fred just because of this, but we need to study why parts two, five, and six gave them problems. Was it that Fred was out to lunch when he measured these or does Rick and Lucy understand how this part works? But once we get through that, we understand that, then we can figure out um, what the appropriate action is to make our measurement system viable. All right, so that's what we can do with non-destructive gauge R&R. Let's figure out what we can do with destructive gauge R&R studies.